Good afternoon. My name is Douglas Slada. I'm from the National Center for Biotechnology Information. I'm here to talk about our efforts in modifying SciDB to load in for our data loading needs. Now, the last time I was here, I was talking about our efforts to display the Thousand Genomes Project. Uh, this data is of a several order of magnitude larger than that. Um, whereas the Thousand Genomes, well, increase from the same Thousand Genomes, had uh, thousands, uh, well, 2,500 samples. This will have over 80,000 currently and continue to grow. And rather than um, indexing 80 million variation sites, we'll be indexing every uh, variation or every site in the uh, human genome, about three and a half billion sites, so quite a bit larger. Uh, and this is also the, a lower level data, not the called variants, but the underlying raw reads. Uh, so, as most of you probably know, that the modern sequencing, you take the genome, chop it up into many small reads, uh, reassemble those and realign them to a genome, you know, and then you can uh, derive the actual sequence from there. So here we're taking account of all the, uh, these are the raw reads, and that's uh, not the right button, there we go. Uh, so our data model is fairly simple. We have. Uh, three dimensions, chromosome position, and the sample number, uh, and about 11 attributes at each location. Uh, number of A's, C's, T's, G's, deletions, insertions, and so forth. I won't go. Um, all right, so let's talk about what it takes to modify SciDB. So you have uh, user data functions, about the simplest uh, Thing you'd add. You just need to understand that you can take in an array of SciDB values and return a single uh, SciDB value and do whatever your imagination can do with those two, within those constraints. Uh, you can add a new data type to SciDB, uh, which case you just need to tell the size of bits of the uh, data type and you have uh, two converters from to and from a string and finally other custom functions to make that data type useful. Uh, for an operator, all you need to understand is the entirety of SciDB's architecture. Uh, this isn't a bug, as I say, it's a feature, because your user operator is, uh, has a first-class object and has full access to all of the SciDB functionality. Anything else another operator can do, your operator can do as well. Uh, I don't actually understand the entire architecture. Uh, so I cheated and found an operator that did pretty close to what I did. In my case, I took the build operator which um, can construct a new array based upon a mathematical function you give it and will uh, generate it from, you know, from that function at each location. Uh, in my case, I just took it and, and instead of loading the, uh, um, instead of doing according to that rule, uh, I'm loading the, uh, the data that it would triple and that, that going in the right spot. Uh, all right, so our test case. We used a rather uh, small cluster of 12 nodes with beefy, uh, with beefy nodes. Uh, and the reason we did that is it's the cheapest per terabyte cost for the amount of data we're, we're loading. Uh, now if you notice, there are 444 terabytes in this cluster. Uh, my argument that this was two-thirds of the beast and if I just had six more nodes didn't actually get me the, the nodes that I wanted from the powers that be. Uh, All right, so loading, in the original uh, version uses the, the SciDB uh, usual thing of loading CSV text and then uh, redimension it. We were getting about 30 minutes per sample. Uh, and then I tried a more, slightly more complicated uh, way of doing it, going to SciDB text, which actually kept in place, and then we can skip the redimension step, and this got us about nine minutes a sample. And finally, with a custom VDB load operator, which wasn't really that uh, optimized, we're down to two minutes per sample. This was much better since instead of taking nearly five years to load the data, we can load it in under uh, four months. Um, and since that data was collected over five years, it probably wouldn't be a very good load cycle to uh, keep up with that. All right, so other considerations for why we're using SciDB. Um, now, we had a very concise storage for our samples. You can see that we had uh, less than 300 megabytes for per sample, uh, where SciDB is considerably larger. However, the query speed uh, going across the samples, using the same hard uh, hardware, uh, 
Mass, you can get about 120 samples per second. Uh, and that's considerably faster. Thank you much for your time, and thank these people for their help.